Good afternoon, everybody. Here at the end of uh, another week. I uh, hope you've had a good one and uh, have, are staying cool. It's uh, it's definitely summer. We can <laughs> tell by that every, each and every day. Um, so I wanted to give you a uh, another quick uh, teaching orientation just to get your minds and your hearts prepared for our time uh, as Simple Churches on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, meeting in our usual places, our simple church gatherings uh, during that time. <clears throat> uh, keep an eye on uh, the Facebook Messenger and uh, email over the course of the weekend, too, for uh, other uh, emails and notice notifications that you usually get. But uh, this will get you oriented to uh, our final new session of uh, the booklet belonging to a family of families. Uh, that we've been working through over the past uh, few weeks uh, after the first book of the First Principles. And I hope you've enjoyed the process, revisiting these ideas again for some of you and reconnecting things and, and engaging in new uh, thoughts and new understanding. Uh, it was one of the things I enjoyed last night in our Thursday night cohort was just uh, those who'd seen this before years ago and just were seeing new things and were talking about it and making new connections. I really, uh, really appreciated that. And it was great to to see that kind of interaction happening. Um, so we'll be um, moving forward on uh, uh, session five. And uh, that makes, means we have one full week after that to really pull it all together in the session six projects, which is not new material, but the week coming, or I guess next Sunday will be a time where we'll uh, talk about the whole thing together and then give you a, ch a chance to uh, uh, do some work and try to pull all your thoughts together at the end of this study. Um, following Christ uh, requires us to think well together and to do work individually and, and come together uh, with new understanding and uh, help sharpen each other. So the work that you're doing on your own and uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, most Christians don't think they have to work uh, like they do in other aspects of life. And I don't know where we got that idea that uh, other things in life require effort and work and planning and uh, learning. But uh, somehow when we come into church, we don't think that, that uh, that's uh, part of it. And uh, it should be more so, uh, given the great privilege and responsibility is to be part of God's grand strategy uh, in, uh, in the church family. So let me um, share with you here. Um, where we're uh, where we're going this week, and a little bit of review from last week too, but uh, just a couple of things to get you oriented. And uh, with the week coming, um, those of you who know the Burns family, Bill and Kathy, there on the upper right. Uh, Bill led the church prior to my time in 2008, so uh, many of you know them. They are now grandparents. Uh, through the daughter Alyssa, their youngest, that you see there on the left, uh, the baby here, um, Arabella Marie, if I rec recall. You can ask Melanie if I got that wrong. I don't know all the other information about weight and size and all that stuff, but uh, she may know that. But their grandparents uh, through Alyssa's uh, giving birth this uh, past week. So uh, I think everybody's doing well. And then we can see... Um, Annabella or Arabella there in the uh, in the middle there. So um, they send their greetings and uh, uh, wanted to let you guys know about that as well. Uh, Nick at Night is coming up this uh, coming uh, Wednesday night. And uh, I want to put a request out to you for those of you who have some ideas about which water games to do. Um, we got a lot of things we can do. The slides, of course, are the big feature, but uh, there are some other things that we could uh, uh, be doing as well. And we're going to want to get those uh, really up and running and ready on uh, uh, Tuesday night or Tuesday during the day, probably. Just make sure we got everything ready and set up. And uh, it's all down from the uh, um, attic in the Ed building. We haven't put anything back up yet from the last uh, block party since it was just a short time ago. Uh, but we'll be able to pull all those things out and get them ready and figure out what we're going to do. It's a one night event. Uh, it's all gonna be water games. We'll have uh, a cooling tent. We'll have a, a place specifically for the smaller children to be where it's safe. And then out on the field to the larger field, we'll have uh, water games with lots of uh, lot, lots of chance to cool off and get wet and uh, have the slides uh, uh, up there. 
and trying to get all those working and functioning optimally as well with uh, uh, with the, the time ahead. There'll be flyers available on Sunday. Uh, the new flyers have a QR code on them that uh, people can snap with their phone and go right to uh, registration. Um, so you can point that out to people and uh, I'll email a um, copy of that out to you that that can be shared around to uh, Facebook or to uh, your email lists or neighbors or friends, whatever you want to do, social media. Uh, but that QR code will be, allow people to snap it with their phone and then go and register their kids there. And uh, what we'll do is registration uh, of the parents. We won't be giving any kids prizes away because of all the water flying around. It's not a great time to do that, but we will still have at least two uh gift uh cards to go out to uh, parents and uh uh the ones who will be eligible will be the ones who register so anybody who's not registered uh, online uh won't uh, won't be in the in the in the hopper at that point so um we want to make sure that we get everybody registered so we can have contact with them and uh, uh follow up with other uh, events and things like that so uh, help us do it and keep that in mind too we are looking at um the final new session of our study of belonging to a family of families, very foundational idea uh, as followers of Christ that needs to be understood very early on in our Christian experience that uh, not only means what it means to be a disciple, to follow Jesus into this new community, but what understand, understand what the nature of this new community is. What have we been brought into uh, by virtue of our believing, following Jesus? Uh, and that's where session five uh, is capping off these ideas about setting our life priorities. This is a big one. This one has really serious implications for our lives if you stop and think about it. And again, just uh, remember how important these are, these ideas are to get into our lives early and to get into the lives of other new believers, particularly early, that it reorients our life priorities. Uh, that the follow of Jesus means to put these ideas at the center of, of, of who we are and what we do as individuals and together. So very, very important. That's um, uh, many have, have been in churches or been to other churches or grown up in other places. And that's that's not how these things are thought about. Uh, following Jesus is thought about as an individual thing. And the church is there really to kind of help support you do that as best you can. And um, you know, some do that better than others, and that's totally upside down from what uh, Christ has intended for his church and the plan that we saw unfold in the New Testament um, that we've been studying through these uh, past weeks. So uh, keep that in mind. This one really kind of brings it back to the uh, the, the, um, the significance uh, of, of what our lives are, 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 are for, and our purpose, uh, our identity uh, together. Uh, just to highlight where we've been. So we looked at Ephesians 2, 11, 3, 18 uh, a few weeks ago in the session one, summarizing the idea this way. The church is the center of Christ's plan for this era. It was previously unrevealed, but now is revealed in detail through Paul and the apostles. The cornerstone of the church is Christ. The foundation was laid by the apostles and prophets and is now being built into a worldwide community of believers, both Jew and Gentile. So a summary statement of what Paul intends to communicate there in Ephesians 2, 11 to 3, 18. You can go back and look at that. And again, I hope you've formulated your own statement like this, uh, sort of the elevator speech from that um, particular passage so that you could clearly and concisely describe what, what it's about, why Paul wrote this and what he was saying when he did. First Timothy 3, 14 to 16, we studied the church as a family of families. Uh, this concept that uh, what is the true nature of the church? Each church is a family, an extended household made up of families, individual households. First and second Timothy and Titus give the household rules, the household instructions for how each local church and family families is to live in community together under Christ's plan, administration for the church. This is what the letters to Timothy and Titus are doing in our scriptures, in our Bible. That's what they're there for. Their purpose is to give these instructions and to lay this uh, family family structure out in, in the churches. It's the primary purpose for being there. It's primarily why Paul wrote them. So we need to understand them in that light and see all the information within them shaped by this uh, idea. 
Uh, third, we looked at Ephesians 5, 16 to 6, 9. You'll see we've looked, done a lot of work in Ephesians this time because Ephesians is one of the ways that you could refer to Ephesians as Paul's manifesto on a local church. It's a strategic church, and Paul wrote to them to help them understand the strategic nature of who they are and what it means to be part of a local church. And, and that's what uh, uh, really sets Ephesians apart from uh, the other letters, though the others have some very, very similar characteristics to them. Uh, living within a believing family. Here we're talking about the individual family. Special instructions are given to families and how are they to live within the church family. Um, husbands are to love their wives and wives are to submit to their husband's leadership. Parents are to train their children to the Lord with fathers taking care not to be harsh with their children. And children are to obey their parents. Masters, today we can think about them as employers. That's maybe a rough equivalent. Or treat, to treat their servants with respect. Servants are to serve their masters if they were serving the Lord. These are called household texts. So again, the idea of a particular kind of literature that Paul was employing uh, to get to uh, communicate the idea across that the good news about Jesus and what he's done and accomplished and the family that he's brought us into reorients all these relationships around him and his purposes. And that's true for us today. We need to think about changes and reshaping that needs to happen in light of that, uh, just like Paul was instructing the church back in the first century. Last week, we looked at back to the idea of the family of families, the larger extended household, because there's all, there are household texts that deal with the individual homes, but there are also texts that household texts that deal with the larger spiritual family, the extended family uh, that we have and see in the New Testament. Um, Titus 2.1 is one of the classic examples of these household text. The one that we're going to look at today and this coming Sunday is also itself a household text, uh, an extended household text, a larger household text, then goes into the text we looked at last week with the individual household text dealing with the, 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 the individual home. Um, so last week might be summarized this way, Titus 2, 1 to 15, the church family, there are specific guidelines given to the church to live as a family. Uh, it's not just a name, it's a reality. Uh, men are to lead as elders who have done a good job leading their own families. Men and women, deacons and deaconesses, deaconesses are to assist them. Widows are to be cared for when their own families cannot. And there is a way older men, older women, younger men and younger women are to live in character and speech. In this way, the gospel will be adorned and people will listen when lives are seen. So living in a particular way in community together for the purpose of decorating the gospel and making it attractive to other people around, living in a way that we, are, we ourselves in the way that we live is evangelism, is good news, is a declaration of the good news. And that even gives us opportunity then to, to, to speak of it and to explain it to people so that they too might be, uh, might be part of it. Um, so some summary statements there that uh, will help you in uh, thinking through where we've come um, and looking also then at what where we're going this week. So um, we have this week this idea of setting life priorities and this pay very careful attention to this opening paragraph because it's very, very significant. I want you to take time to reflect on it and ask yourself, you know, is this the way I think about this? Uh, and if not, why not? If so, why? Um, it's really profound when you stop and think about it uh, because it's, we're not pressed on issues like this most often in our culture. We consider ourselves free to do what we want to do or to make our own pursuits, but this is this is saying something very different. This pushes back very, very much on the way our culture thinks about individual uh, individuals and uh, their relationships with one another and, and even to some degree their, their relationship with God. So the, the problem is addressed or sort of introduced to us this way. Once we understand Christ's overall mission and gain a, gain a sense of his basic plan, including his household instruction for our families and for our churches, we are in a position to begin setting our life priorities. Again, stop and think about that, what that means. Um, we're going to talk about this on Sunday. In a general sense, we all have the same priorities and we need to arrange our lives around them before we can plan our lives in any specific way. So there's some general things about life planning and our life orientation that ought to be the same for all of us before they are different. That's another different way of thinking about it. 
if we are going to be true disciples of Christ, we must adapt our lives to his mission, his plan, and his guidelines for our lives, our families, and our churches. In a sense, that's what it means to be a disciple. Uh, you put all those other things aside for the sake of following him, his mission, plan, guidelines for all of our lives. We must learn to live our lives wisely with a solid understanding of what his will is for our lives. A significant portion of his will for our lives is revealed in his mission, his plan for his church. Um, including the household texts. In this session, we will study Ephesians 5, 15 to 21, which challenges us to live wisely within the sphere of Christ's plan. So we're going to look at this text. I'll read it here in a minute to you. It's one that you're uh, probably familiar with. But again, like that text that we had in Titus last week, this is an extended household text. It's written to the larger household of households or the larger family of families. And then he begins in 522 to address husbands and wives, parents and children and slaves and masters. So um, keep these questions in mind uh, as I read this and as you read uh, you're on your own. Uh, come with some thinking done on these subjects so that we can share those together and learn together and learn from one another on Sunday. In this context in Ephesians, what does it mean to walk as wise men, to understand the will of the Lord? What's that actually referring to? What does the filling of the Spirit of God have to do with walking wisely and understanding the will of the Lord? We think about the Spirit of God in a particular way. Uh, and, and in a particular time, in a particular place, but Paul is very practical about it here. How is that different than the way we usually think about that? In what sense are walking wisely and being filled with the Spirit similar commands? Are those two different things or are they the same things? What makes them more alike than different? Keep that in mind as you read this and think about it. And then finally, what is the relationship between walking wisely, the filling of the Spirit, and following Christ's household instruction in Ephesians 5, 22 to 6, 9? What about these things are absolutely important that Paul teaches them first and then gives the instructions that he does later on that we studied a couple of weeks ago to husbands and wives, parents and children, slaves and masters. Uh, why, why these things first? Why, are these, why is this an important foundation to have prior to going to teaching uh, about that? So let me read the passage um, it, itself. Uh, let's look at that. So. Here I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and uh, we're earlier on in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Um, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. What's the difference between a fool and a wise person? You might think about that. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he goes on, as I said, uh, to the beginning of that passage we looked at a couple of weeks ago, but we're, final, we're, we're finishing it here and further submit to one another out of reference for Christ. Um, that could be the beginning of the next passage or the end of this passage. Um, it's really a bridge, as you can see, because then he goes, okay, for wives, for husbands, for children, for parents, for master, slaves, for masters, you see what he's doing there. So there's a 21 is a very, very key verse in, um, in bridging between the two, the, the larger household of God and then down into individual households. Um, Let's talk about the significance of this passage when we come together on Sunday. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. What's that mean? What are we talking about in this context, uh, given what Paul is doing up here? So you have those questions that I just uh, laid out for you, and uh, then you have this reading. Um, I hope you take time to stop and think about it. Think about the, uh, this teaching and this text, uh, this, this section from Paul in light of the questions that we have there. And uh, we'll be ready to come together to discuss it as we usually do on Sunday at 10 a.m. So I look forward to seeing you all there and hope you have a great weekend. Uh, God bless and uh, continue to be in prayer and, and touch with one another. Thanks.